Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, March 1st, 2015. Our subject today is Christ Jesus. Uh, there are a few kind of business things I wanted to talk about first this morning. Um, number one is, Bruce let me know, I, I guess that our, our contributions, our collection on Sundays have, has been declining. You know, many of you have mentioned how wonderful it is. We get everything free off the website, and it is true. You download books, lessons, the magazine, all kinds of things, at least roundtables, Bible studies. Uh, and I think many of you probably think, well, you contribute in other ways, but financially is an important way to contribute. If you were going to your local branch church, I'm sure you would give something each week. So the church does not run on air, and we do appreciate your contribution. It's, a, it's really a matter of principle, too. Uh, and, and I'm not talking to everyone who's listening, because many of you do contribute regularly. But for those who don't, or do it very sporadically, or haven't done it at all, it, it's really something to think about. Tithing has been very a part of, of what we have learned here, mainly because it's a biblical principle. It's in the Bible. The Mormons do it. But I know, in my experience, the tithing has led to, to great blessings. So uh, think about this, and, and think about, is it principled to always be taking from the website or from things the church is so freely giving and not to contribute in some way financially? Uh, second, Wednesday evening, the meeting started off a little bit slow. It did pick up, and I think we ended up with 16 testimonies, so that was great. But remember to always come with a testimony. Uh, you shouldn't just uh, think, well, I'll just come and sit this week. The time that you do that, that's what everybody else is, is thinking. We shouldn't have any long pauses. Uh, and as I mentioned to you, it's sort of like a well, you could compare it maybe to a potluck dinner that we're preparing for the weary wanderers. <laughs> um, and each one brings something. And you should bring something. You don't come in empty-handed, or you don't bring something that's half-baked or you haven't thought much about, or you're just talking about something without any real thought or prayer. You come prepared, ready to give. And maybe you won't need to, but if, if there is a pause, you'll be ready with something meaningful and something that will help the weary wanderer, the, mil the millions of unprejudiced minds. And due to Jeremy and all his YouTubes and other things, we are getting more and more people listening, uh, sometimes for the first time. So don't let their first time be a time when the potluck dinner is really bad. <laughs> let it always be excellent highest quality. Our church is only as good as each one of you. And I know, well, Luann is an outstanding example of determinedly, determinedly telling me that she would never testify. Absolutely no way she'd do anything but that. And now she does, and not only does she, but she prepares her testimony sometimes days in advance because she's so grateful. And this is part of the the Holy Ghost, the dissension of the Holy Ghost coming down on us. It changes you. You can no longer sit in your seat. You're so full of gratitude and enthusiasm for God. So maybe what you once were, you no longer are. That's what we were talking about yesterday. Um, the other thing is, is our watching. Um, please make sure in the daytime you're spending some time individually watching. Um, join us in our in our unity watches if you can. You get the message. You can do it another time if you need to. But and those messages are just chords. They're not formulas or out outlines. They're just thoughts about what you could be thinking about. Uh, and if you don't feel you know know how to watch better, well, we have a lot on our website about how. To I would suggest all of you read Watches, Prayers, and Arguments from start to finish. And also, you're learning in our Bible studies and in these roundtables how to watch. You're, you're learning how to give treatments. If you're really here and listening and absorbing it, it will change everything 
in your life. And the last, I, there was a quote that I had mentioned. Um, well, it was in one of our watches, and it is where Mrs. Eddy is quoted as saying, all the people need in order to love and adopt Christian science is a true sense of its founder. In proportion as they have found it, our cause will advance. And that's in We, the new, we Knew Mary Baker Eddy series. Um, but it was pointed out to me, because it's been on the Mary Baker Eddy Institute website, and there's a book by, I think his name is Millie, but anyway, he goes on to say, because people ask, well, why, why haven't more people have been attracted to Christian science? And so she says, if you render that statement in the negative, the statement would read, all the people need in order to hate and to fail to adopt Christian science is a false sense of its founder. In proportion, um, and as they have this false sense, will our cause decline? So I think it's a very important thing to be thinking about and to be handling. What is your concept of Mrs. Eddy? Do you have a right concept? Do you see her uh, in her true depict? Be familiar with the carpenter work, um, Mary Baker Eddy, her spiritual footsteps, and also precepts. But thank God uh, those books have been available to give us a proper appreciation not to love her as a person, but to see her as an idea, as a principle, and the discoverer and founder of this blessed uh, way of life that we have. Any comments on any of this? May I say something, please? Please. Um, in the lesson this week, we have... Uh, then they were gladly received his word and were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. We ha should have the same right attitude in our thoughts and prayers, and we can add 3,000 souls or more. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I, I do feel it's not so much quantity is quality, and our quality is excellent. Uh, and, and I do feel there's something to be said when we have, there should be more churches bringing up, like ours, independent, so we don't have thousands and thousands of people <laughs> calling in, for instance. But, um, but, but yes, people are finding it, and many are just listening and not coming forward, and that's fine, too. But with this right attitude, we, we can usher in the millennium, and that is largely by seeing them here already. It is by seeing them here already. Uh, but it's important. You're right, Jim, to have the expectation that the world is ready for Christian science. There are people out there ready for Christian science. Thank you very much, Jim. Anybody else? I'm tithing. <clears throat> I remember when I was new to the church, I said, the hand that is open to give is open to receive. And it was true. The more I gave, the more I was receiving in all ways, not just financially, but healing and, and just wonderful things. So I always remember that too. Thank you. And, you know, originally we did think about not giving everything free the way we do, making some kind of a, a yearly membership, uh, and then you could only access certain things if, if you paid. But we decided not to do that, and, and we are keeping it, where everything is offered free, freely. And, and we would like to keep it that way. It's just that it has to be paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the Bible it says, the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. And I think that just gives the right spirit to the whole thing. Your good cheer and whatever blessings that you have are wonderful. But if they're just kept to yourself, then they squander. Like it says in the, the hymn, that seeds that stay in the garner, they mildew there. But if they're scattered, they fill with gold the whole plain. Thank you. That's 
Beautiful. Thank you. May so I all of these things are just between you and your father. Uh, but we seem to need to bring it up on occasion. Anyone else? If I could just I the other hymn. Of, of Go ahead, Clarence. No, the other hymn about make, make channels for the streams of love or something like it goes like that. That's what I was I used to overcome this uh, uh, sense of oh I'm not able to give I'm not able to give. It's always it's there, but the, the fear comes like oh well then how am I going to pay for this? But of course it's always God first and. Freely we have been given, and if we freely give, it comes. It comes in many different ways. I mean, I, I, I don't do it uh, every week because my what comes to me is in certain intervals, but then the total is given, and, and more is given me, so I'm grateful for that. Thank you very much. And, yes, Lawrence wrote a beautiful article and gave a testimony about that a few weeks ago. So, thank you. What's the the quote about the, I'm a, just a raindrop, I think I'll tarry in the sky instead of falling to earth and nourishing the earth? Yes, yeah. I think that's in Pulpit and Press. It's a wonderful thing where you hold back. What good are you? You're just that raindrop. You'll tarry in the sky. But, no, we all, we all are responsible and we purify the earth with our purify the world thought with our giving our right our right thinking and uh, so the train drop is just as important as every other raindrop absolutely and together they do wonderful things <laughs> right yeah just a little bit of history back in the 1980s we spent two hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars to defend our cause against the litigation that was brought by the Denver trustees, board of directors up in Boston against us. Eventually, we mm -hmm. prevailed. But during the whole time, there wasn't any single wealthy individual that just dropped a big chunk on us. It was many, many who gave smaller amounts, but they all contributed. And as a result, this thing came about. We have a new, this independent church. Thank you. And it never should be one individual wealthy person. It should never be that. That deprives others, and, and our others just say, oh, well, that person will do it. That's, that's not everyone. And it, you shouldn't feel if just because you don't have much to give that you shouldn't give. That's the raindrop tearing in the sky. You give what you can. The widows might, perhaps, and maybe that, that's worth a lot more than the wealthy one. So... Okay, well, we had a wonderful Bible study yesterday. Thank you again, Elizabeth. And so today, I think we covered the lesson well. I'm not sure if anyone has anything else to add or to say. If you weren't there, I'm sure it'll be up to listen to, if not already. Okay, well, we will start on page 31 of Miscellaneous Writing, Questions and Answers. And... Uh, this is a very, very important first one that we're starting with. Florence, would you please read? Yes. What do you consider to be mental malpractice? Mental malpractice is a bland denial of truth and is the antipode of Christian science. To mentally argue in a manner that can dis disastrously affect the happiness of a fellow being, harm him morally, physically, or spiritually, breaks the golden rule and subverts the scientific laws of being. This, therefore, is not the use but the abuse of mental treatment and its mental malpractice. It is needless to say that such a subversion of right is not scientific. Its claim to power is in proportion to the faith in evil and consequently to the lack of faith in good. Such false faith finds no place in and receives no aid from the principle or the rules of Christian science. 
for it denies the grand verity of this science, namely, that God good has all power. This okay. sees the individual... Oh, no, you can okay. stop right just there. Thank you. That's yeah. plenty. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Who would like to comment? What does, what does the word bland mean? Yeah. <laughs> Unturbed or tranquil? Um, in the um, 1828, it says mild, soft, gentle, which is what you think. But then it says placid, um, smooth, or lenient. And when it said placid, it was like air can just roll right over you and you can do whatever it wants you to. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I get it has the connotation of uh, almost indifference. And one of the things that I've learned here is that indifference is really hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, we've heard it's even worse than hate. Uh, there was a, a study done on in infants, I think, in... Mrs. Evans used to tell this story, and those that were treated indifferently, well, came close to dying. Uh, it, it's, it's a very, very detrimental state, to say the least, to be indifferent, not to care. We land. No love. No love. Thank you. No love. The absence of God. It's godless. And to get back to bland... I found soft and soothing, not stimulating. I want you to read, I will read something to you. Martha Wilcox has written two articles on malpractice. One's called Malpractice and the other's called Ma No Malpractice, and it's a good additional reading to this. But she says that Mrs. Eddy sets forth two phases of mortal mind or mental malpractice. First, the bland or soothing denial of truth. These bland or soothing denials of mortal mind are never stimulating. Rather, do they put us at ease in matter. They put us in a state of non-resistance to the beliefs of mortal mind. These bland and soothing modes of mortal thought impose upon us mental qualities of indifference, lethargy, apathy, mental laziness, inaction, all of which we may be quite unconscious of. They impose us limitations. They impose upon us limita limitations of capacity, ability, endurance, modes of thought, which are the very opposite of man's God-given dominion. So you see, first, all oh, the bland denial of truth. It doesn't sound that terrible, but it's, it, it is actually it's very terrible. Um, any comments? Any examples? Well, I was just going to say, if you don't stand with God, then you stand for nothing. And nothing will get you absolutely what it is. It's nothing. You, you, you won't progress. You won't go forward. You'll just, it'll be a miserable existence. Right, and that's how it feels. But in fact, you're going either forward or backward. You, uh, when you are in that state, uh, it's easy for the for error to use you for its purposes, and that is the, that is the wickedness of this bland denial. Yeah, you become putty in the hands of schemers. And at first, you may not even know it if you're in this state of thought. So get, give some... Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah. I heard somewhere, I forget where, but the most dangerous thing that can ever happen to anyone is to put them into a state where they're not resistant to evil. They don't even see it coming. They're like blind to what's going on. But it doesn't come upon you in a rush. It, it creeps upon you. God gave us dominion over the creeping things. And, uh, you know, little by little, it gets you more, less resistant, 
until you're just nothing. This is Eddie says, resist error and it will flee from you. If you don't have that resistance, then you will you will. You will be overtaken by a tyrannical, aggressive mental suggestion. You know, you think of what happened to, to Germany. And and of course even France too, they, they gave in quickly. No resistance. But first it happens in your own thought. And in, and it is definitely a state of mesmerism. You are being mesmerized. The serpent is talking to you. So let's have some examples. I'm sure it's happened to all of us. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, just, this is just um, when I get up in the morning, um, if I don't um, immediately turn my thought to God or just focus on reading a lesson or something, there are so many arguments that will tell me I need to do this or that, or and it just continues to come until then it's noon and I haven't done anything. So that's a subtle but certainly land denial. That's perfect. Thank you. I know myself, uh, just recently, I wasn't uh, standing strong, and I became very ill. And it was because I did not fight the air. I just kind of let it walk all over me, and that was being planned. Thank you. Another example is you might go to an office or some other scenario. Somebody starts mouth uh, thing maliciously against somebody else, but doing it in such a way where it's so casual, not in la maybe even laughing about it. But first of all, the whole idea of talking badly about someone else is just rank malice in itself. But to do it, you know, like it's just socially acceptable, and you're supposed to go along with it, it's pretty bad. And the thought will come, well, it's not that bad. You know, it's not that bad. Oh, if it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> I think what's also helpful is um, with thinking that something is not that bad is, like you said, Mary, before um, in handling mental malpractice, I mean, animal magnetism, I'm sorry, when, like, I drop something or I trip or, you know, I'm, I forget something, instead of just overlooking those things, um, remembering that God is, the only power is, is very um, helpful yeah. for me because otherwise I would just let those things go and then leave it open to just, you know, accept more things as the day goes on. Thank you. That's a really good one, too. All these I could say, Go ahead. Um, I'd like to say that uh, it happens when we see things around us and we, uh, you know, don't really take a stand or we don't stand up to things that are happening and say, no, that's not right. You know, and in ourselves, when we deny the air, also affirm the truth, but sometimes we just wash it over. And that's, that, you know, whitewashing can be really a problem. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it sure can. Yeah, because it is a bland denial of truth. It is. This is true. Mm hmm The Adam dream... The, the material world is a bland denial of truth. So, yeah, we, we have to rise in rebellion against it. That's why the command statements, you just can't let it, as Ari just say, wash over you. You've got to resist it. And then you can, then the thought comes, oh, it's so much to do. I can't do that. Oh, my gosh, it's just too much. Well, <laughs> it, you can either think a right thought or a wrong thought. And neither, <laughs> just as hard to think the the wrong thought it is as it is the right thought. That's another bland denial of truth that would get you not to even bother to do it and say it's too much. Uh, all these little suggestions that come that you're too tired, you know, that you whatever, you just need a break. Not, uh, you know, I don't want to give the testimony tonight. I'm just not feeling up to it. I just this or that. Steals away the treasures of truth. I mean, think about how advertising works. You, you read or you see an advertisement. The whole objective of the advertisement is to persuade you that you want something that you don't have or that you need something that you don't have. Persuade you that God has 
not provided you with everything that you need, that you're unhappy, <laughs> and that you have to buy something in order to be happy. Behind that is the bland denial of truth. And the, the more you become aware of it, and the more you begin to handle it, the happier you will become, and the more you will be alert to it, and the more you will be less fooled by it. Sometimes in the beginning, you can be so sunk into it, it seems hard to, to get there. That's where you have to fight and struggle and get out of it. But, um, and, and here again, this is the process, the pond and purpose, the first stage where you're realizing what's wrong and what you need to do and repent to God. And, and then that second stage that we mentioned yesterday, which is the Holy Ghost coming, where you get a much clearer sense of who and what you are and your purpose. Elizabeth said she's not fooled by those suggestions in the morning because it will just take you. You don't stop it there. You know, you can go weeks without reading or studying or having any time with God at all. You don't stop it. That's how it works. So, What's also a problem, um, I'd like to interject, is that sometimes one can think, oh, I can read this, I can read that, and I'll read the science and health, and one needs to concentrate. If we don't concentrate on our work and we get uh, sidetracked, so to speak, that's not, that's, you know, that's really um, the devil, I would say, that's animal magnetism trying to snare us. Yes. Yeah, and if you get off reading too much other stuff, right, that's a sure trail that you're getting off. You've been watching movies or books that are just magazines, whatever, that aren't, that are gossip magazines, they have no truth to them, they can pull you away. It doesn't mean we keep our head in the sand, however. We can be aware of what's going on. It's just mm -hmm. getting pulled into it, sidetracked. Yeah, um, I'd just like to say that uh, I remember it was quite a while back, but, um, you know, I'd get up in the morning and I'd just be so tired and I'd have a cup of coffee and so I'd probably read some news on the internet while I had my cup of coffee, and then I'd read my lesson. And then uh, one day I said, you know, why are you doing this, you know? And so then I just started reading the lesson first. Even though I was so sleepy, I didn't know what I was reading. But, um, you know, I found that uh, by doing that, actually, my, my day seemed to go a little bit easier. Uh, Thank you, absolutely. You know, we've been taught here in the morning, your thought is like a sponge, and you will take in whatever you first put into it. So you put the truth in. That's why the lesson should be read, it's the first thing. I mean, I, w I would used to get sometimes people calling, and, you know, they said they would read the lesson at the end of the day. Well, what good is that? You read it first thing. Get your thought right to be thinking of the enduring, the good, and the true. Spend that quality time with your father. So later, when you seem to be bombarded with other things, you, you have the ready answer. You're poised. You've got your arsenal ready. And Bernard Young tells us in his article on day, no mind is all. And, and I do that now, which I didn't used to do. When I first get up, before any other thoughts come in, I won't allow other thoughts in. Thank and you. it's very, very helpful. And that because is the answer. Get right, and then he's saying, uh, mind how already has the day. The day is in mind. So you have to subjugate your human beliefs to this, and it helps a great deal. Yes. The answer to any malpractice is the knowing that the one mind, which we will get into. But yes, and to just start very first thing, even before you read the lesson. God is mind. God is my mind. God is the only pure and perfect mind. And your mind cannot drift into evil, Mrs. Eddy says. So the bland denial, the soothing statement. Was that Lauren? Yeah, I was just going to say what has helped me is just the simple words of God first and remembering all that God first. <laughs> because it, it is true, you know, you're direct, you know, misled into doing all everything else but that. And that's what helped me in the beginning. But, you know, 
God first, God first, God first. That's all I remember. If I'm distracted to do something, you know, God first, and I would do. And it's helped. It's been very helpful for me. Those simple words, God first. Thank you. Very good. So good. Does anybody have their Bible available? Yes. Who is that? Jean. Jean, okay. Jean, turn to Revelation 3. Have it? Yeah. Okay, I want you to read verses 14 to 19. Okay. 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodicean. Speak up loudly, please. Go ahead. Pardon? Speak up loudly. These things, okay, these things saith the um, Amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and, thou, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. You have the next one? That was at 19. One more, Jean. One more, Jean. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Yes. Thank you. That's one of the antidotes to the bland. <laughs> this idea of being neither hot nor cold, it means you are indifferent, you are bland, and, and you get spewed out. This is why um, Saul became Paul, because at least he had a passion. He cared deeply one way or the other. So if you ever find yourself not caring or becoming indifferent, wake yourself up. This is a bland denial, and you need to get out of it and, and get some feeling, get some uh, oomph to your day. Otherwise, you can be. You'll be taken over, non-resistant. So remember that. And, and he was rebuking this, uh, this church for being indifferent, lack of caring, lack of love, all those things I read in, from Martha Wilcox. And, and two, beware of in your own self, when you're feeling really happy or excited about something and someone will say, oh, you know, calm down. Don't get so excited <laughs> about that. Watch out for that kind of thing. <laughs> Keep your enthusiasm. <laughs> Don't let anybody give you the bland denial. <laughs> the other way it happens is if, uh, you know, sometimes if you're giving a needed rebuke and that person will tell you again, calm down or what's the matter with you or why are you so hot-headed, it's a needed rebuke, you don't calm down. You keep your, you keep your passion. Keep your love for God and for man. Don't lose that. If you don't, you won't be subject to the bland denial. And if you feel it coming over you, then you fight like hell. Anybody else on the bland denial? Yes. Uh, okay, Jim. Uh, before I left Arizona, um, California, I was enjoying, apparently, TV. I would spend hours each day in bland denial of the truth. Since I've been in Arizona, I have never had my TV connected, and I have not missed a thing. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly can be a 
uh, channel for mesmerism if you get glued to it, as can be the computer, the Internet, playing golf, too, for hours. A lot of ways that it would take you over. I have Anybody the else? Feeling, yeah. I have the greatest feeling that the whole United States is in this terrible whole war plan. Nobody is standing up for what they really believe, and I think they really do believe more than they're saying. Well, and that is true, and that is what the news would like to get you to believe, because a lot of people yeah. do care, and we, we know that, and they are, and actually a lot of people are speaking up. So the news, again, that would be the mesmer, mesmerism, propaganda. You know, in, in Nazi Germany, before they took over, they had all this propaganda making you believe that they had already taken over. So that's why Jim said what he did. Watch, be careful of what you watch on the news. It would make you think that everything's just terrible. And uh, that's not the truth. It's certainly not dr the truth about God's creation. And we must deny it and know it not to be true, or we will get sucked into a false picture and, and go into that state of, no oh, it's useless, the whole, whole world, everybody's just a mess, why bother? That's just what it wants. Yeah. True. Anybody else? Well, okay. I found the same thing about TV by accident, because... I have one of these old CRT TVs, and several months ago it broke, and um, I just didn't buy a new one. And um, yeah, I, I haven't really missed it yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's spiritual growth. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I, I wanted to speak on a little bit with this bland denial and uh, my experiences years ago in uh, different organizations with, uh, in the movement. And uh, one of the things that I found um, actually most distressing was the blandness that comes across as pleasantness and um, nothing's bad happening here and everybody's happy and we'll all be nice. But in the meantime, in these... Um, situations there were abuses, hatred, and crimes, real crimes, actually taking place right under their noses, and they were unaddressed, ignored. Well, um, I can't even think of all the words I would say, but basically it was allowed to continue. And uh, I think some of the most uh, dangerous bland is the one that looks pleasant. Thank and you. I just thought I had to bring that up because I think sometimes we think everything is okay in those situations when actually some of the worst stuff is going on. Thank you. Yeah, that, that gets to the definition of the word nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When you look at it, it's one of the worst four-letter words there is. <laughs> yes, I agree. Because nice covers iniquity. It covers all that crap. Thank you. That's a very major point, Linda. So thank you for yeah. and, and extremely important. It it does. This blandness would smile you smile at you and yeah, stab you in the back or other things uh, and, and cover and that's it. That's exactly what it wants you to do to to lull you to sleep. Certainly, that was happening in Nazi Germany, putting everybody to sleep and not resisting while the worst atrocities were going on right under everybody's noses. And if there's something that happen today, it could happen today. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, the German translation, if I translate it back, it's like it's pretend, a pretending. Did, did you hear that? What, what, what? What is pretending? Yes, the connotation of pretending. Mm -hmm. Pretend. The pretend. Right. Yeah. The, the land. The blood <laughs> land. Right. Pretending denial. Good. Yep. It's a pretense. Mm -hmm. Pretense. Covering up iniquity. Yes. And it certainly was, uh, it would seem to be very rapid in what we call the culture. Um, I mean, I know with my mother, whom I absolutely adored, and I'm not even saying this in any way critically, but, you know, she would... She would smile and, and act like everything was fine. In the meantime, 
you know, she was, there was all this churning going on underneath and stuff going on that I didn't know about really till I became an adult, but I could see it was, and that was her concept of science was covering it up, putting on that smile, even though there were so many unmet problems. There's a very serious thing that goes on, a serious misconception of science. You do not ignore and put on a, a happy face when all hell is breaking loose. That's not handling it. It's it's uh, moral idiocy, really. So no pretending here. You do not pretend. You are what you are. And actually, if you're upset or anything else, you don't really. You shouldn't hide any of that. You should let it out. Find out what's the matter. Get to the bottom of things. Do not. Be a fake or a phony. It will. It will just it's devastating. And and so we we grow and we learn. And you know that was my mother's early concept of it, and mine too, until I learned better. And it was hell. It was absolute hell. Better to scream, throw things, get things out in the open. That's the hot and cold business, than to just smile and have all this stuff going on one of the biggest causes for the cause of Christian science to go to the depths that it went to. People pretended that all was well when they needed to take action. Yes. This is why this subject is so important, the right sense of it, how to handle it. Have we thoroughly covered the bland denial? Should we go on to the next, which is the malicious form of malpractice, which she begins to, she gets into? Have we anyone else on the bland denial? It's, it's very important you understand it. Do you feel like you understand it now? Yes. Yes. Good. Thank you. Is this what you meant about, like, making a decision and then sticking to it when, when we talked about my truck and stuff like that? When we talked about your what? My truck. Oh, your truck? Making a decision and sticking to it? Yeah. I'm not so, sure. That might be better asked <laughs> another time. I don't know what you mean. Because um, if, you, if, if you're in this, like, bland denial, and then you, you just let things run over top of you, you're hot and cold, hot and cold, and then you don't make a decision, you don't stick to it, you don't make a conviction of, of what you want to, what you need to have happen. You don't stick to the truth and just let things, other people run your life and make decisions for you. You pray. Oh, and, yeah. You pray and you get something from from God. You, you know what's right, and then you don't do anything to follow through with it. That's kind of like bland denial. It's right. Kind of well, that's true. Or you let someone else influence you and keep you bland and keep you from acting when you know there's something that you need you need to do. So. And the truth comes to each one of us when when we need it, and we either see it and run with it with enthusiasm, or we let the arguments tell us that well maybe later or maybe not, or maybe this didn't come from God or something like that. So, yeah, take your stand and stick with it. When you feel God has told, told you something, take your stand and stick with it. If, uh, if you feel he's guiding you in another direction, well, that's fine, too. But um, if you're just being influenced by someone else and what they're saying, then no. And don't let anyone take your enthusiasm for God and for this, what we're doing, uh, you keep that enthusiasm. Enthusiasm has to do with the spirit of God in you and working in you. It's very important. We should all be enthusiastic and happy in this science. It shouldn't be all down and dour and miserable and suffering. We have times of struggle and times of suffering, but then we should come out and be all the better for it. So, Hello? Yes. Hi, yeah, this is Pink. 
Uh, first of all, thank you so much for reminding us uh, about contributing. Sometimes we're just dealing with so many things here, and it's, uh, it's really good that you did that. Thank you. Um, I just uh, wanted to uh, say a couple of things of the wonderful things that you have brought today, brought up today. Um, one is, if we would bless anyone, I do not let myself um, just put my feet on uh, the ground until I have stated a couple of spiritual truths. And so, and you know, usually I've been praying uh, before that, but definitely I do not put my feet on the ground until I have some spiritual truth for the day. And that's, uh, that's just a rule that has blessed me so much, and I'm just sharing that. And also I wanted to um, bring up, I think it's one of the biggest blessings I have got from Christian Science, from the study, about ways that are vain. Every time I go to this amazing article, I, I, I just can not only be blessed, but blessed so much in so many, in seeing so many things that are going on, and I wasn't that aware. And um, also the things that you have said, uh, um, had a line that she said that about um, they are sticklers for a false convenient peace. This is that it's so wonderful to be aware of not to do this. And that's Thank you. Ways that are vain certainly goes along with all of this. Thank you very much. And it, it would be this putting you to sleep, you know, before a, uh, a, a, a serpent. They hypnotize you. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, The Jungle Book, but Tim, the, the serpent would wave his head back and forth, and pretty soon Tim's head was waving back and forth. His eyes were swirling around, but he was getting hypnotized by it. And that, that's this bland denial that would put you to sleep. And it would be sticklers for a false convenience. You make a false peace. You can't make peace with error. You cannot. You cannot. And this is where the hot and cold comes in. The hot and cold is a, is a good thing. By that it means you've got some kind of feeling going. You're not, you're not bland. And, and you don't allow these things. Just as Winston Churchill saw the foe in ambush and and he, he was telling everybody. He knew there was something wrong going on in, in, with Hitler in Germany. And he spoke up about it. And who was it? The one who wanted him to calm down and thought he was a nasty old man was a, a so-called Christian scientist, that Lady Astor. So, so it's important that we have this feeling and, and a love for God and for man. And when we do, we will speak up and we will never, never, ever settle for a false convenient peace. So keep your fight. That's what I guess Bruce started in the beginning about you've got to be able to resist. And to resist, you need to fight, at least at this stage. So thank you. Okay, any more on bland? Everybody got it down now, so you'll be aware of it. All right, the next part we're going to get into is, is very important, too, and it's the malicious mental malpractice. And Mrs. Eddy is talking about it here, isn't she, in this first paragraph. Um, what does the word subvert mean? Turn it from the truth. And it's upside down. To rule utterly. Thank you. Who else? Who said something. Okay, well, turn it upside down. Yeah. Somebody said turn it upside down. I right? said that up, turn it upside down. Thank you. He had to overthrow from the foundation to ruin utterly. And she uses it a few times in this paragraph. So this is what malicious mental malpractice would do if it could, and we're going to get into it, the bell is rung, but we're going to really get into it next week because it's something that Christian scientists don't seem to understand. They'll say, you know, someone is malpracticing on me or someone passed on because of malpractice. Well, we are going to get into it and rip it apart 
so you understand it and so that you know how to handle it and deal with it. Not ignore it, but handle it and deal with it, as we all should be doing. Hold crime in check. Yes. I'm going to end today. This is Martha Wilcox, page 210, and it's about the Pentecostal day, which we talked about yesterday. Today should be our Pentecostal day, the day on which we are filled with spiritual power or filled with the Holy Ghost. If there is any feeling of disturbance in our thought this morning, if there is any bitterness or dislike or aversion to anyone or to anything in all the world, if there is a clouded past or an anxiety for the future, let it all vanish into its native nothingness. And let us breathe in silent prayer the words of our beloved leader. Fill us today with all thou art. Be thou our stay alway. What are the vital points in this prayer? Not only service and love for mankind, but the great need of being responsive to truth only. In this way, material resistance to truth is made nothing, and we are free to reflect the spiritual power. True sense of Pentecost. Thank you. So, thank you all, and we will be supporting a good service coming up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.